Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to get around to making uh, something I've been wanting to do since before Christmas, and that is a stand for the surface plate. Uh, just before Christmas I picked up a 12 by 18 surface plate from a local uh, machine tooling store. Uh, they run for a good deal, so I grabbed one. Um, very similar to the one that uh, James Dedman just picked up, probably out of the same factory actually. Uh, workshop grade, uh, Again, not laboratory grade, but it's certainly better than having none, which is what I had before. And what I want to do is I want to make a stand that will allow me to not just pick it up easily, uh, well, more easily than it is, but also level it and make it more useful. So this will probably be a two-part series as far as making the stand and then making some accessories and stuff for it. So I hope you find it interesting and I hope you stick around. So as time goes by, I want to be able to use the uh, surface plate for more than just a, uh, well, overly large and bulky mouse pad. And the thing is, right here on the bench, it's not the most easy place to use. What I'd like to do is get this mounted on a stand so I can level it and also make it easier to move. One thing right now, for example, right, I can't get my fingers underneath it very easily and trying to lift it and move it around is going to probably damage it. So we'll move the monitor for little man away. Get rid of the water for a moment. And yeah, it's uh, still a, you know, still a nice shape. I haven't really dinged it up too much and haven't really had a chance to use it much. We're also going to make a cover for this. Uh, what we're going to use is bed frame, free angle iron. Again, the thing about bed frame is not 100% sure what mix it is, so it is a form of mystery metal, not like knowing what's coming as far as mild steel, as far as normal angle iron. It's an 18 inch by 12 inch um, surface plate. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up so that I can cut the notches out of the corners on the bandsaw for the leveling feet. Uh, we'll just use some commercially available ones, you know, for the eight bucks it cost me, I can't really justify making my own. I had originally th debated whether or not to run uh, bars across the inside and then set on the three airy points. Um, if you're unfamiliar with those, you can just look them up on uh, look them up on Wikipedia or wherever. But as far as the size of a slab this is, it's a three inch thick slab that's 12 by 18. I don't think I'm gonna induce too much as far as a warpage into it by setting it onto, you know, its perimeter versus setting it on the airy points. Somebody who's really into metrology may be able to, you know, change my mind on that and that, that's fine. But basically any level uh, surface plate is going to be better than no surface plate. And so I'm going to start with this and as time goes on, if I get better gear and better technique and learn more about this, then if I have to graduate up to a bigger stand then in a bigger plate, then I'll deal with airy points at that point. All right, we have the fence set up to uh, 45 degrees to the blade. Uh, well, protractor, protractor close anyway. What we'll do is we'll cut two pieces that are 18 and 3 eighths to the outside corner as we cut, and two that are 12 and 3 eighths. So to hold it, I have a piece of inch and a quarter uh, square block in here to go up against here. And because of this radius, I have a short piece of flat bar there. And that allows me to anchor it nice and tightly into the saw. I'll have to manually feed it down so it doesn't snag. There we go. So there's the one end. As I say, uh, two pieces, 18 and 3 eighths, two that are 12 and 3 eighths, um, you've seen bandsaws work before, so I'll get those cut and bring you back in. Now, for the standoffs, what we're going to use is a piece of one inch uh, cold rolled uh, 1018 bar. We'll just basically, you know, drill in, thread, part, drill, thread, part, and just keep going that way until we have four of them. So we start by center drilling. Now, if you notice, I've already got the parting tool set up. Parting tool is already set up square to the uh, square to the chuck. Okay. 
Okay, that's pilot drilled two inches. What that'll allow me to do is to, should theoretically be able to make two of these standoffs without having to uh, continue pilot drilling. Tap drill size is a 1364, which is within a couple thousandths of an inch of the number seven, which is your tapping drill size. What I like to do is just use those uh, cobalt bits that I got for free. They're the ones I use for doing basic, you know, stabbing the holes into things. Use those for the heavy lifting and then I can save my other drills, wear and tear on them, for uh, when, I, when they have to actually make holes of a particular size. Hopefully my good drills will last longer then. Now, I am going to live dangerously. See how this goes. See if it goes okay, or whether we have an earth-shattering kaboom. Now I do have a spiral point tap, otherwise known as a gun tap. I guess, I guess gun tap is sort of a trade name or something, but... Well, we'll see how she goes. Person could be a little more brave when it comes to working with mild steel. Hmm, not so bad at all. Yep, I like it. So, with the edge of the parting tool lined up at the end of the work, we take our dial indicator on the mount here. I'm going to go to one inch. 750. Slide it over till it says one inch. Again, this isn't super, super critical. We have three quarters of an inch on our piece there. We'll lock the carriage, get him out of the way. Now we can start parting off. And here goes. Basically, I need to make three more like that. I'll bring you back in once I have all four standoffs made. So in setting this up, I used up pretty much every clamp I had in the shop that was a decent size. Um, in fact, I used more than I had. I had to break out my ball joint press, which is, well, ball joint universal joint press, which I use as a mechanic. Um, had to break it out to clamp one corner together as well. I'm using these blocks, which are, you know, I know that they're square. They got a little bit of a step on the top. It deal, helps to deal with the radius on the inside and clamp to all four corners. I've measured across the corners, it's the same measurement, so we're square. What I'll do is I'll tack it together first and then we'll do our fill welds. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's, there's our first batch of tacks. So I'll start, with, I'll start with this corner where the camera is already set.
probably a little fast, but I also didn't want to burn through. How did I not dunk the tungsten on that one with how shaky I am? Alright. Okay, uh, next step is I'm going to take the flapper wheel on the disc grinder, clean up these outside ugly bits, um, flatten them out. i got to flatten these beads here because this is where we have to mount our standoffs. So I'm going to do that and bring it back in. Now to mount the standoffs, do this. Okay, we're going to do it this way. I'll go right about there, about a quarter inch in from either side. Alright, not the prettiest tack, but it's tacked. For a guy who's a pretty much an amateur, that's not that bad. It'll work for our purposes. Not the prettiest, but functional. Uh, I'll zap the other four on same way, and then, uh, yeah. It's just hard to try to get a good angle for an arc shot here. So, I'll bring it back in when they're all welded on. Alrighty, just got the last standoff mel <laughs> melted, welded on. I guess it is melting. And, uh, I don't know. You know, for a uh, weekend warrior with not enough seat time, I don't think that's that bad. I mean, they'll, uh, you know, they'll certainly hold. Don't ever try to make anything structurally critical out of this stuff. Um, I'm just using it because it was here and it was free to hold up a 75 pound uh, chunk of uh, rock uh, with four feet under it. This will be plenty strong enough for what I'm going to do with it. But uh, as I say, just yeah, don't use it for anything critical. If you can at all, <laughs> I can see why bed manufacturers rivet them together instead of welding. Again, I had heard that this stuff, a lot of these uh, bed rails are made of reheated and re-rolled uh, rail line. And I could believe it. Messing around a while ago with, uh, you know, not quite sufficient equipment, I was trying to harden this stuff. And it, uh, yeah, Pierre did a much better job in testing. He has better equipment and way more knowledge about this stuff than I do. And we found that, yeah, it can be hardened. So obviously it's got some carbon in it. I don't foresee it failing under the weight of a 75 pound chunk of stone, but again, don't use this for anything structurally critical. Um, I'm just using it because I'm cheap. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, before painting, I need to give it a quick rub over with the flapper wheel, get all the crust and junk off, and then we'll prime and paint it. I think it came out re looking reasonably well, though, if I do say so myself. I don't know, ever since doing those lathe feet, it's just kind of, uh, this particular shade of grey has kind of grown on me as far as, uh, you know, being a nice shop color. I don't know, maybe I'm just not as much into the vibrant colors as some people are, which is fine. So these little feet just spin in there. Oh, you're shuffling. Oh. You stay awake, but you stay asleep, buddy. 
Yeah, he's still asleep. Disheveled. All right. Now, because I don't want to mash my fingers, we're going to do this. <clears throat> it only has to balance for a moment. And this way, I'm not trying to drop it into the... Um, into the lip. Like I was saying before, it's kind of a, like I was saying before, it's kind of an awkward piece of rock to move otherwise. Now are you gonna balance? Okay, good. I had these set down just to tr try to provide a little bit of something between the rock and the table surface. So now theoretically this just slides up underneath. And yes, it has a little bit of warpage to it, but such is life. There. And so now I've actually got a way of getting my fingers underneath it to pick it up. as well as level it. So that is, so yeah, I like that. That's pretty much what I was looking for and what I wanted. Um, what I need to do now is make a spot for it. I think it's gonna be right here uh, to the left of my general work area. Um, the only thing is I need to move the uh, computer CPU uh, I'll probably put that over in that corner there and move the measuring stuff over here. That'll do off camera because I'm sure you don't want to watch me run uh, computer cables. So, all right, I like that one. I just need to adjust the level now. Well, that's going to be a little better now. I have a bit more space to work with. Uh, I can actually get at the first aid kit if I need it. Uh, the two uh, height gauges can actually fit right in the corner there nicely. Um, surface plate nice easy spot to get at uh, I've already leveled it yeah, I've already leveled it in the two directions one of the nice things is that being now that it's on a corner it's right over top of a leg so it's a lot more solid than it was over uh, over in this area I have this area to work with again and one other thing is this is a lot more convenient to get at than uh, than it was when it was over here so so I think what we're going to do is we're going to call that for part one. Uh, we have the plate mounted in the stand and leveled, which is nice. And uh, what we'll do in part two is we're going to make a cover for it, uh, as well as the accessories for the surface gauge that Doug sent me. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to everybody who subscribes. I appreciate everybody who does, uh, each and every one of you. I'm a, still a fairly small channel, and that's fine. I just It's been fun getting to know everybody. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you all next time for part two.